In Jesus' name, amen. There are likely few Bible passages more familiar to people than this wonderful verse, John 3.16. We learn in Sunday school, in confirmation class, in our personal devotions, we hear it said in sermons, even in our discussions with one another, that this passage, this one verse, is the gospel in a nutshell. For God so loved the world, that God gave his only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him may not perish, but have everlasting life. As we come to the midpoint of this season of Lent and begin to turn our attention in earnest to the events of Holy Week, here again the power of the cross, we hear this Bible passage from John's Gospel that once again we learn that in Jesus' death, his resurrection from the dead, and his continuing life in and among his people here on earth, that that is the fundamental and basic sign of God's love for you and for the whole world. That God loves the world in John 3.16 includes every human person the planet that we call home with its life-giving beauty and every aspect of human life. That passage surely deserves our attention, our reverence, our thanks, and our joy. The Bible passage, however, doesn't appear out of nowhere in John's Gospel as if someone just plastered it on a t-shirt and stood in front of a camera at a sporting event. This Bible passage is part of a wonderful story that begins earlier in the chapter. In fact, it's a gospel reading that was read at the last Sunday we gathered together last March 8th. When we gathered together, we heard the beginning of this story, and it's worth reminding ourselves how the story begins. It's the account of Nicodemus a leader of the people, a deeply religious man. He heard reports about Jesus and what Jesus had done. Perhaps he even knew the story that we heard last week when Jesus went to the temple and turned the tables on the money changers. Nicodemus wanted to find out more about who this Jesus was. And so he went at night directly to Jesus not depending on other people to interpret for him, but he wanted to hear it from Jesus himself. He didn't depend on someone else. And Nicodemus began the conversation with Jesus by saying, no one could be doing or saying the things that you're doing and saying unless that person was from God. And in a sense, Nicodemus opened the door for Jesus to tell him more. And then Jesus uses Nicodemus' curiosity to teach him what it means to be born anew by the power of the Holy Spirit. And in teaching Nicodemus, he teaches you. And he teaches me what it means to be born anew. The conversation concludes with the words that we read in today's Gospel as Jesus refers to the events of the Hebrew scriptures that we heard in the first lesson, when the people who were exiting Egypt were smitten by serpents, and God gave them this cure of putting a bronze serpent on a pole, and every time they looked to it, they were healed. And Jesus said, in the same way, God is healing the whole world through the life and death and resurrection of God's own Son. There's a personal story I'd like to share with you. It comes to me every time I hear this story about Nicodemus. When I was a boy, we oftentimes had missionaries visit the church where I was a member on Sundays to tell us the story of their work from wherever they came. One time we welcomed a person who was a missionary in New Guinea, and he brought with him two people from that church in New Guinea. The name of one of those people was 
Nicodemus. After worship, this threesome came to our home for dinner, and I can remember these many, many years later, I can remember my dad asking Nicodemus at our table how he got his name. And he told us his story. He had heard the message of Jesus. He'd heard about Jesus. He'd heard about these people who call themselves followers of Jesus. He heard about God's love and forgiveness and wanted to know more. And so he went and he heard about God's love and forgiveness for him. He heard that through faith in this person called Jesus, he had the gift of eternal life. And by the power of the Holy Spirit, he receives the forgiveness of sins and the promise of God's in loving embrace with him forever. He was moved by the power of the Holy Spirit to come to the waters of baptism. And as he did, he told the person who was baptizing him that he wanted to be called a new name, not the name that he had been given at birth, but he wanted henceforth to be known as Nicodemus because he saw his story to be similar to the story of Nicodemus in John chapter 3. The same promise that Nicodemus in John chapter 3 heard spoken was now the center of this person's life a full half globe away. Not only was his life changed, not only was his name changed, his life was changed. Jesus reminds us in the continuing verses here in John chapter 3 that in spite of this magnificent message of grace and living in the power of the Holy Spirit, human nature is we still like the darkness instead of the light. It's human condition to be drawn to the darkness of sin, even for those who've been baptized in Christ. And not only are people drawn to the darkness, we find ways to justify life in the darkness of violence and hurt, of prejudice and selfishness. But you see, when you come to the light of Christ, we stand under that light, and we are see ourselves for who we are, and God loves us anyway. It's kind of like when the sun shines through your windshield in your car, and you think it's clean, but then you see all those fingerprints and smudges and that film that forms on the windshield, and you're reminded that it needs to be clean. When you come to the light of Christ, we are shown for who we are. And even more important than that, we know that God loves us anyway. Many of the wonderful hymns that we sing in this season and throughout the church's year accent that truth. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound. Just as I am without one plea. We hear the message of Nicodemus in the first century Nicodemus in the 20th century, and you and me, Nicodemus is in the 21st century. I hope that during these final weeks of Lent, you will take the time, find the context, find a partner to help you meet Jesus anew during the season of renewal and a new faith. We meet Jesus in the actions found in the prayer that's a part of our Ash Wednesday service from over three weeks ago now. Well, we pray that we provide for the poor, pray for those in need, fast from self-indulgence, and above all, find our treasure in the life of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. May you see Jesus anew this season and be strengthened and comforted by his grace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Relying on the promises of God, we pray boldly for the church, the world, and all in need. You send your Son that the world might be saved through him. Inspire the witness of the church throughout the world. Empower missionaries, Bible translators, and ministries of service in your name. Bless our partners in ministry. 
our ELCA Global part Partner Churches and Young Adults in Global Mission. Hear us, O oh God, your mercy is great. You sustained your people in the wilderness. Give courage to all who lead in times of crisis and scarce resources. Prosper the work of those who aid victims of famine and drought. Bring peace in places where scarce resources cause violence. Hear us, O oh God, your mercy is great. Your mercy endures forever. Deliver all who cry to you, especially those who are hungry or without homes. Give life in places where death seems triumphant. Give healing to those who are sick or in any need, especially Richard Foster, Joe Helms, J.D. and Jackie Blackwelder, Joan Coslary, Gail Beasley, Kenny Smith, Jeff Hubbard, Sarah Crawley, Sonia Dalton, Samuel Edmonds, Jack Hughes, Jack Ingram, the Coley Jones family, Ron Turbyfill, Dale Miller, Kyle Thomas, Edith Bostian, Jimmy Dahl, Shirley Blankenship, Leslie Keller, Jamie Weaver, Mandy Rose. Hear us, O oh God, your mercy is great. By grace we have been saved. Fill this congregation to overflowing with that grace that we may show mercy to others. Nourish any in our midst who are hungry, especially children, and bless our ministries of feeding and shelter. Give us patience and courage when the way seems long. Hear us, O oh God, your mercy is great. Your son was lifted up that, whatever, that whoever believes might have eternal life. We praise you for all who have died in Christ. Bring us with all the saints into the fullness of your promises. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. We entrust ourselves and all our prayers to you, O faithful God, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine on you with grace and mercy. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Go in peace, share the good news. Thanks be to God.